I was just going to say that we have a special guest on twofratboys.com, my daughter, Valentina. She's been uh, listening and attentively listening to our history of what we did, the business. And she had a few questions that she wanted to share or ask us to get more insight. She wanted, she wanted to get a little granular and she wanted to uh, help her understand. Okay, mama, pues, uh, comenzar. Okay. Primero, primero tienes que decir tu nombre para que sepan. En español. Uh, tengo una y tengo preguntas para ti. Uh, okay. Go. ¿Cuántos eventos han tenido en total? Uh, primera pregunta, ¿cuántos eventos hemos tenido en total? Sí, hemos, uh, nosotros preparamos más de 20 eventos durante los años que trabajamos juntos. Um, pero para decir el número exacto, tal vez sería más como 50, tal vez. Un promedio, sí. Creo que hicimos como un average de, vamos a decir, cinco, vamos a decir cinco eventos al año, multiplicado por de 99 a 2014. So that's 2009. No, no, no. 15 años. 15 años. Yeah, 15 times 5. Um, 75. Vamos a 25. Yes, 65. Un promedio. Ok, segunda pregunta. ¿Dónde se conocieron? Uh, oh, yo tengo, yo, 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 yo voy a responder. La primera vez que yo vi a Jesús y me uh, how do you say introduce? Introducir, nos introducimos. Cuando, cuando, uh -huh, cuando me, me, me presentaron a Jesús, Jesús es, era un su primer año en la universidad o su segundo año? Primer. Primer año, estábamos en un cuarto y él estaba interesado en ser miembro de nuestra fraternidad y Jesús tuvo Tenía una, una camisa puesta que me, era un poco raro y me confundió porque era una camisa de un grupo que se llama Metallica. Y no, no, no entendí por qué a alguien como Jesús le gustaría un grupo de Metallica, pero eso fue el primer. ¿Y eso fue en qué año? Eso fue en 1995. Eso es, a ver, ¿cuántos años atrás? 95, 2005, 2015, 2020, 25 años. 25 años, sí. Atrás. Ah. En ok, tercera pregunta. ¿Cuántos años corrieron haciendo eventos? ¿Cuántos años qué? ¿Cuántos años uh, corrimos haciendo eventos? Oh. Sí, eso fue casi 15, 15 años en total. Sí. Comenzamos en 1999, cuatro años después de conocerlo, y corrimos hasta 2015. Y tú naciste en 2014. So, un año después que tú naciste. Ok. Un día, um, última pregunta. Okay. Habla más fuerte. ¿Cuál fue? ¿Su favorito evento y por qué? Uh, buena pregunta. Me gusta. Sí, qué buena pregunta. Yo sé la mía. Yo, yo voy, vamos, a tener, sí. vamos a tener diferentes uh, respuestas. El mío es este aquí. Eso es porque lo puse en un marco. Uh, our Saturday, June 10th, 2006, Silk 5, Hunter College. ¿Y por qué? Es porque este evento fue el evento donde tuvimos lo, uh, lo más personas que ha venido a nuestro, a nuestro evento. 1900, ¿Cuánto fue? Eso? ¿1906? 1906. Sí, 1906. 1906 personas. Esto aquí está lleno de personas. Y estaba patrocinado por el, el U.S. Army. Sí, ese es mi evento favorito. Jesús, ¿cuál es la, cuál es la Sí, para mí fue el evento que hicimos en Los Ángeles en 2004, 
yo creo que fue el año que hablamos en el último, en el último podcast y esa sería la primera vez que hicimos un evento grande en Los Ángeles, California. Y tú sabes, Anthony y yo uh, fuimos, tuvimos mucha gente eh, en el evento, pero tuvimos mucho, ¿cómo se dice? Apoyo y, y, y tuvimos mucho, muy, había mucho amor para nosotros y lo que estamos haciendo en, en el momento. Sí, lo, lo que pasó en, en ese evento fue que fue nuestra primera vez yendo a Los Ángeles porque muchos de todos nuestros eventos fueron en Nueva York y fue la primera vez que fuimos allá y ten, mucha gente salieron para el evento, vinieron y teníamos mucho éxito y fue sí. un evento uh, exitoso. Creo que se dice. Y eso fue un, una un grande logro para nosotros y Jesús, Jesús era el que estaba encargado de ese evento so, por, por, por él fue es que estaba muy um, successful ese, ese evento entonces eso fueron todas las preguntas ok, gracias mamá. adiós chao <risa> adiós chao Jesús ok All right, I'm gonna put you back Okay, here we go. We are in year 2006 and we started in Silk, Dallas. I actually wasn't at the Irving Art Center, uh, I believe, which is interesting because was it on a Saturday? Yeah, I, I believe. I so. Yeah, no, no, actually Friday, February 24th. So do you, do you recall being there? Oh yeah, oh yeah. We had, um, we had coverage that day from the local TV station so um they did a segment on us uh which we can link i guess in the video description here um and uh it was it was really cool to be able to um kind of i was in charge of that event obviously and uh you know we we had sold that place out like before we even really? got there so yeah so it was and, and so <laughs> the day of the event i was with uh, our colleague diana who was also working in the tour the college tour with us And right. uh, I remember it was pouring, it was pouring like massive rain. <laughs> and we had about, um, let me see how many teams. It was about 12, 11, 12 teams that were taking yeah. part in the event. Yeah. And so I, I wasn't concerned because we had sold out. So we really just had to manage the event. I was more concerned that the people weren't going to be able to get to the venue because there was thunderstorms and, and people oh, driving wow. from, from everywhere to, to get there. Um, and so... Yeah, it was, um, give me one second. So just to recap from the website, it said, if Dallas was any indication of what's in store for stroll teams in 06, we're in for an amazing year. Another exciting season of Latino Step began on February 24th. This was the first time Silk visited Dallas and in front of a sold out audience of 700 plus, the teams did not disappoint. Five Beta Sigmas, Metroplex, Mobstas, shimmied and outstrolled the competition. Had the crowd pump with the reggaeton stroll, narrowly defeating a Sigma on the beta team from UT Arlington. In the sorority category, nine teams quickly got shaved down to three. Katie Kai from UH and the ladies in disguise from UTSA were so close that the judges had them tied for first, edging out Sigma wow. and the Gamma from Oklahoma by a narrow margin. Shout out to that Sigma and the Gamma second round stroll that had the crowd hyped. Um, but yeah, the, Well, yeah, this event was it was it was a beautiful venue just to lay it out a bit. Uh, the stage was probably the largest stage we've ever used in our life. Like it was really it was like it was auditorium style seating, but the stage was just flat and like long. <laughs> so uh, getting getting around, I think it's the type of stage that would make a stroll team run out of gas from doing, <laughs> from going all the way across back and forth. But uh, yeah, yeah we, this, we've never this, had a stage like that. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, it was a good show, um, you know, a great show, I should say, because, you know, we had a lot of support. There were about 12 teams, like I said, um, inclu and they were like all the big teams in, in the region. So, um, you know, it, it, was, it wasn't technically inside of Dallas. It was at Irvington, which is just outside, but it was close enough. So, uh, right. um, we were able to draw big crowds. Do, do you recall, I mean, I, I think you were on the tour with me during the week, no? Mate. Dallas, Dallas. Uh, 
Was that the Frankie J concert? Uh, that we, wasn't mentioned no. on the site. It might have been the next year that we did Frankie J. Right, right. Okay. I have actually, I'm going to show, I got some pictures of the Irving Art Center. Does this look familiar to you? Yeah. Yep. Look at that long stage, man. It's, it, it's much longer than, than it may seem. <laughs> this, this angle might, might add actually a bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it, it actually it, looks small now, but, but oh, trust really? me that, yeah, it looks small it, in the it, picture. It reminds me of the Columbia University Lerner Hall stage. Yeah. Yeah. Let me um, see if I can, yeah. Yeah. Let, let me look for, uh, you said you had, there was that, that on your page, you want to send me the link so I can share. Oh, I sent it through the chat. Um, let me okay. see if I can pull, pull it no, up. I can, um, I can get I'll, it on the chat, I believe. But yeah, we had we had nice coverage of the event, which I will um, I'll send you a link just now as I pull it up on my. But um... do you know how to stroll? Well, the college students who represented their fraternities and sororities last weekend sure do. They performed in a competition held at the Irving Arts Center last Friday, and there was standing room only for the event. Here's a look. Routine, we gotta take they came from tonight. near, you know, take it back to Arlington, yeah. And far. Well, we came all the way from Houston. Never mind the hassle. Uh, it wasn't very fun. There was a lot of traffic, but I'm here to support my boys. <laughs> or the weather. Forget the rain. All right. Nothing could keep them away. It was worth it. I'm here to support my bros here and help cheer them on. Just what steps would these young college men and women take to come to Irving, and why? Hey. Ooh, if I could tell you, if I could only tell you. You have to find out that for yourself. Must have something to do with all those Greek letters. Betas are here. You know, it's always hot with the betas. Latino fraternities and sororities from all over Texas and Oklahoma came to Irving to compete in the Silk Stroll competition. And their fellow frat brothers and sorority sisters filled Carpenter Performance Hall to capacity to support them. For me, I think it's about pride for your organization, you know, unity, doing things together. Everybody here representing for the organization. Jesus Diaz is director of college events for Latcom Inc., host of the event. The uh, Silk Stroll Competition is a national tournament, a uh, national stroll show tournament where the best fraternities and sororities from each market, Dallas, Chicago, and LA, will compete. They'll compete for prizes. I believe it's $750 in cash, or they have the option of actually, I think, about $1,200 to go towards the national competition in New York in June. So either way, it's a great prize. And something even better than cash. And bragging rights, everyone wants to be number one. And they'll get there by showing their best moves on the floor, known as strolling. Well, strolling is an inline dance, um, sort of like an electric slide, but it's much more popular, much more cooler. It's got a hipper twist uh, for the college students. Our college tour and this stroll program is completely sponsored by uh, Smart Edge by GMAC, which uh, teaches students how to finance vehicles uh, if they're looking to purchase a vehicle, as well as the U.S. Army, who's you know really really big in the Latino market, um, as well as Latino U, which is the official college magazine for Latino students. The DJs kept the crowd happy, playing the music for everybody here, the best of reggaeton, hip hop, and uh, and more. And the judges had their work cut out for them because every group. Put on a good show. The crowd loved them all. So, whatever the outcome of the competition, it was just good to be in the mix. Yeah. Great job, everybody. Did a good job. job. That was the last one. We got the hype, the crowd all hyped up. All we want to do is put performance, no matter if we win or lose. Yeah, that's right, baby. This is Kathy Whiteman reporting. Congrats to the winners of the competition. To find out if your favorite Greek organization made the finalists going to New York, visit the website latinosstep.com. Yeah, so that video was pretty cool, man. Yeah, I wish we had kind of like a recap like that for every show. It would have been, would have been useful. Um, but, uh, yeah, I see you're wearing your UT Austin hat, uh, as you used to love to wear. 
Do you still wear that hat when you're doing? I still have it. I should have. I should have brought it for this episode. <laughs> um, yeah, that that was a great recap they did. It was well done. It, they they look. They had a lot of cameras there, or like that was the TV station, right? That did all the the videoing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I remember when they arrived at the venue, they weren't sure if the event was happening anymore because they even told me they're like. We didn't know you guys were still going when they said the show show must go on because of the thunderstorm. So right. Yeah. Um but yeah, as you saw there the judges were literally on stage. It was that's, that's how great big the, the, the that's, stage was. That's perfect. That that's actually how we should have done a lot of but because it's the the uh because the stages were never that big, we weren't able to, but that is the best angle for a judge to, you know, see everything, right? Is uh on stage kind of like how we did when we were selling uh, ultra vip tickets at uh <laughs> ultra vip tickets at what club were we was it it was amazura amazura yep it was amazura was it yeah 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 wow. and they said man uh necessity is the mother of invention we needed to make more revenue so we sold ultra vi we created the ultra vip ticket which basically allowed you to sit on stage while the teams were strolling with a drink in your hand and an and adult drink in your hand. We sold we two were, of those. Yeah, we sold yeah, two of those we ultra VIP tickets. Way ahead of our time with that one, man. I'm, I'm telling you like that in today's society, like where everybody wants to be, look at me, look at me, like, right, right. And they want to drink like, damn, that was a great package. <laughs> that was, man. I think, I think I remember the ticket price because it was so ridiculous. I'm not good at remembering the numbers. You are, but tell me if I'm right. It was $175. Uh, right. It was, it was, it, it was triple digit for sure. I don't remember the exact number. We'll probably I, figure I, it out later. I, but I yeah, think it, it was 175, man. At least, at least, it was at least a hundred. I can't remember the exact number though. I'm, but, uh, I'm pretty certain because it also came with uh, car service. <laughs> <laughs> so we were we calculate. I remember we were calculating how to how to charge it, and I remember it was like forty dollars for the car service. It was drinks. It was the ticket, and uh, it was the ultimate uh, experience, stroll show experience. Like you were you were so close to sweat off the performers were like dripping off onto onto you that sounds right <laughs> man the, yeah the other thing uh, just to kind of go back to your your point about judges being on stage like we we at that point knew that we needed to take all the blame and and, and allocate all the blame where it needed to go for like the shows so that oh, we could reduce yeah. we could reduce like the attention on us because we had nothing to do with the judging all we did we, ne we never did that, right we never had yeah we do. never did right right but we wanted to make it very transparent and uh and all we did was take the judge scorecard which we then ended up posting online after the show and we just input that into a spreadsheet that calculated the final result. So why why, why didn't we do that all, uh, all along? Why, what took you so long to, to to like publicly like you know keep it? Well, uh... well, I I know I initially we because we had so I was definitely more protective of our kind of like uh, what I felt was the intellectual property. So like of the show, which was the, anybody... which was what the tabulation. Yeah, how we scored was a piece of it. I mean, there was a lot of a lot of secret sauce to our to our magic, but I think how we scored the shows was something that we knew and that I didn't want to just give it away because we had spent years developing it. And so, well, you know, from tell me, but, all right, well, let's let's give it away right now. Like what 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 was in that secret sauce? I mean, well, there was, is it is it still intellectual? Is there still IP coverage on them? No, no. It it I mean, it how so you could have you could have reverse engineered it, you know, seeing what we posted online ultimately, but I didn't want to make it super easy, you know, to, to figure out. So nothing, nothing earth shattering, but basically like we, we removed high lows, which you remember. Right. We, I remember that. We took deductions for different things. We took 50% of professional judges, 50% of Greek judges, and we balanced it out in a way um, so that it would calculate appropriately and give the appropriate weight to each because there might be four 
professional judges and then 10 mm. Greek org judges. So we couldn't, it wasn't that the 10 would have more power than the four. So we had to like balance that out. Right, right. And, Wait, so it was a weighted average. We, we were weighted yeah. average, right? Weighted average. Yeah. 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 And, and uh, had, had, I remember, <laughs> I remember talking to somebody, I don't remember which show it was, but like there was a Greek who, who a Greek judge in a sorority who saw what we were doing and she was a statistician. Like that was her profession. And she really? was, she was floored by the level of like, she was throwing terminology at me of what we were doing without mm -hmm. knowing it. Like she was just like, yeah, you guys have rubrics in there. And I, and I, you know, I played like I knew what she was talking about. I had, where I was, was this? Like, you, I don't, I don't remember you telling, what, maybe you telling this? Where, what, what, what show is this? I, I don't remember what show. That's it definitely awesome. was another, it was another city. Um, Wait, and the like judge. Other, other than New York? Yeah, yeah, it was outside New York. It was right. so it might have been California. Hopefully, hopefully yeah. that girl is what that person is watching this episode, and we want her to email us at greekster.tv at gmail and yeah. explain to us what we were doing <laughs> back then. What 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 is Susie doing? Because you were really the uh, the leader of the. Hey. Uh, and I, I think was, we all we all do it we all do it in different ways. Like in our personal lives, like we come up with a solution that we think is just so. Um, so intelligent or so unique that we think it came from us, but really we're just pulling in from a different That's source. That's true. So, uh, all, all of like life's learnings just kicking in in the background, and we think that we were the ones that like, like, like created it, right? Yeah. But but the one thing I knew, just to go back to your question, is the one thing I knew is that it took us years to get to that point. That's true. And I wasn't going to just give that to an organization after the show yeah. and just let them kind of copy and paste, you know. So. Your point. To your point, I, I always thought when we were doing these shows, like I did not. Not let me let me let me reword that. Not that I always thought, but like I at its at its basic level, what we did wasn't proprietary, like intellectual, like high level. Like it wasn't like like uh, you know rocket science. What we were doing, we were basically renting a venue and asking teams, "Hey, do you want to go on stage and perform?" and that, that was in essence what we were doing, which isn't hard. Like a lot of people do can do it and do do it. But uh, to your point, it's like all these little small details that when you, you know, when you put it all together, like when you create a brand, when you, you know, create Latino Step or Greekster.tv and then you market that and then you get a nice venue and then you maybe get a nice sponsor to throw you some money and then you're able to kind of elevate things you're able to add money to it like all, all like the money the marketing the right teams a website you know what i mean like all all that stuff jump jump in whenever yeah no i was gonna say absolutely and and, and you touched on it with the marketing like having a high-end designer who Mm -hmm. had done work at the ad agency level like that's something that helped us continue to build so people didn't really like maybe put it all together and say oh wow where did this design like how did their design just go from you know point a to point z you know and like and they didn't connect all of these dots and then yeah to your point it's just the the perseverance that, that you need to have uh with calling up teams to get them engaged it, it wasn't rocket science but right. we had built we had put a whole bunch of things together. Like you said, that's the perfect definition. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we, we, we were really good at marketing. We were really, really good at marketing. Yeah, we and were. that's something we, we never, we never bragged about it as much, but we, you know, thanks to but you, you're of, the one that put, put the vision down, you know, you, you, from the beginning, you always said, maybe we should do this, you know, and like you threw out, we throw out kind of an idea that I didn't see before. I hadn't seen before. And then we did it. And then all of a sudden it became really cool. You know, so it's like it was nice to develop those ideas that were coming out of your brain, out of Al's brain, and just like and your brain. Them. adding up all the small little pieces and also caring about it. You know, I think also that I think it also kind of like we, we really weren't in it for the money. Like we didn't do we, we didn't start doing this for the money. But to continue doing it, you need to earn money, <laughs> you know. So <laughs> right. So I mean we didn't do it for the money. I think that like, all the extra stuff we would do, like, you know, spend time on thinking of fun things, funny things that we thought that you and I thought were hilarious. Like, uh, I remember one show, remember when we, 
I, I forget the show. Were you? Yeah, yeah, you were involved. It was at uh, La Boom, which ironically is like a 10 minute drive from my current home here in Queens. Um, and we did the stroll zone. So uh, I don't remember how that came about. I think that was your idea, the stroll zone. But like, do you remember the specifics about that show and what we were doing in, with the space and stuff? Yeah, the, I mean, the stroll zone was, it, it was like an idea. Again, I don't take ownership for any yet. I may have mentioned it for this show because the venue was right. So basically a stroll zone was an area that we taped off or marked off on the dance floor. So it's like, if you're, it was standing room only, but we wanted to keep an area clear for the strollers to be able to do the strolls, uh, you know, off, off stage. So, yeah, I feel like no one really took advantage of that that specific stroll zone or am i misremembering yeah no no some ideas don't don't work as much uh, because you you'd need like almost like a security team to keep the area clear but but yeah it was yeah so we tried it you know we were trying a lot of things and uh um yeah but but yeah we were really good at marketing even 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 if it didn't turn out to be the a useful idea like I think people still came out and were asking like different details about and not the stroll zone specifically, but other ideas like the ultra VIP. Everyone had questions and wanted to kind of get to know what what we were trying to do or what we were doing. So the ultra VIP, yeah, we're gonna bring that back one day. <laughs>